Some people say the Lorsch Key 88 is the best MIDI keyboard to control Ableton Live. Reason enough for me to check this out. In this video I show you how to produce a complete track in Ableton Live with the Lorsch Key 88 by Novation without even touching Ableton Live once. My name is Thomas Foster and if you are interested in music production, now is the right moment to subscribe to my channel. Good to have you here, let's go! I was using a USB cable to connect my Lorsch key with my computer and immediately I was able to control Ableton Live. What means to control? If I press the play button, we are immediately in the play mode. If this is not working on your computer, you should open the settings of Ableton Live, go to MIDI and here you can choose the driver of the Lorsch key and here you can activate MIDI of the Lorsch key. After that you should be able to say play or stop or activate the metronome or deactivate the metronome and you can choose here the tracks. So. The recording for track one, now I can uh, play the drums. On track two, we have the space. On track three, we have a nice road sound and a synthesizer. On track four. All these sounds are not from the Lorsch key, as the Lorsch key is just a MIDI controller and has no sounds. Uh, all these sounds are plugins. I'm always using the Mutant Player, that's a free plugin you can download for free. And here I have one Mutant Player on track one, where I loaded the drum sounds. On track two, also the Mutant Player with the bass, the Fender Rhodes and the synthesizer, a free sound of the Mutant player in track 4. Alright, um, here if we are in session mode, I'll show you later how to change this mode. If we are in session mode, we can activate uh, the slots here, the recording of which track we are listening to. Uh, so this is track 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is the first slot, the second slot. If you want to go down to slot 3 and 4, you can do this with the arrows here and you see the three line that shows you which two lines you could activate here. So let's go up again. We want to record on track 2 a bass line on the first slot. So I press play. And before I come to the first beat of the next bar, we press record to record on track two, a bass. One, two, three, four. So it's already in uh, play mode, looping. It's not so perfect in time, so let's quantize it. Next thing we want to do is we want to record some drums. So I go here to track one. And I could record now the drums with the normal keys. But it's much more fun to use the pads. They are perfect for drum sounds. So we have to change the mode. We can change the mode of the faders, of the knobs and of the pads. We do this with the shift key. So we hold down the shift key and with this area here, with this row here, we can define what these knobs are doing. With this line here, we can define what the pads are doing and here we can define what the faders are doing. So we are now in session mode. That means we can for the pads, right? That's what we control here. The session mode is active, so we can uh, say what we want to play or where we want to record. But we can go now to drum mode and now we can use this knobs to play the drums. 
first we have to say where we want to record them. So let's go back to the session mode and say we want to record here on this track. Let's make stop. So now it's active, right? We go now to the drums and now we say let's record. We don't need to click anymore, we want to quantize what we did. We missed the last shaker here. And here's a nice snap. So let's add a snap and the last shaker uh, by pressing record again. I first press play. Okay, now we did an overdub. We have now um, the, shake, uh, the snap and the last shaker. Wonderful. So now we recorded, uh, recorded the drums and we can change the volume now here with this faders. Uh, if this is not working, press the shift key and say here volume. Now we can control. Volume is fine for now. Let's go to track three. Here we have our Fender Rhodes sound of the Mutant player. And now we could play the chords. But maybe you never learned to play the piano. So there's an easier way. There are two ways. The first is the um, fixed chord. So you could press fixed chord and play one chord. Let's play C minor. Now we programmed this chord here. So now we could just play this chord. Ooh, this one is not nice. So there's a better way to do it because here we would like to play a major chord, right? So what we can do is we go to scale mode here. So we press shift again, use the second area to define what the pads are doing. Again, first button was the session mode where we can say where we want to record or what we want to play. Second was the drum mode where we can use this instead of the keys. And now we go to the scale mode. And now we can play here the chords. Very important is that the key is the right one. So normally the key is a C. Um, to change the mode, we simply press Shift Scale. And now we could say we want to play in C minor. Let's check this out. But our track is not in C minor. So again, shift scale, our track is in G minor. Now I program G and now we are in the right key. So let's record this. This was not so good, let's do it again. We use the undo function, undo, yeah, undo to re uh, make the last step backwards. And this is good, this is good. And this one is good. Okay, let's record. Volume. Quantize. Let's go to track four. Here we have the synthesizer. Again, we could play it like this. But we also could use 
der Apeciator. Okay. Um, to control what the arpeggiator is doing, we hold down the arpeggiator and now we have different colors. On the first row, we can define what the second row is doing. All right. So uh, let's go to the second button here. Uh, and this is the rate. Now we can control the rate. So this would be 18, eight notes. The first button is quarter notes, 16, 32s, and we also can make triplets here, right? With the button number five. Um, we can, let's go to eight notes. Uh, and now in the first row, we press the first button to define the type. At the moment, we are in the up mode. So everything goes up, but we also could go down, up and down. or as played. Uh, very interesting is also the chord mode. But let's stay on the up mode and go back to 16th. And now we go to function number four. This is the rhythm. Here you have special interesting rhythms. Let's check out this one. So maybe we want to make this sound a little bit more interesting. So maybe we want to add, use the sense to add some delay or reverb. So for example, we could use this knobs here to control the sense or the faders here. Uh, let's use first um, this one here to add some reverb. I press shift and press here the third button that is saying send A. And now instead of the volume, I can control for track one, two, three, four, the uh, reverb, send A. Um, let's add some delay. To do this, I hold down the shift key. And now we go here where it says send to make these the sense B. Um, if it's send A, you have to press again. First time it's A and second time it's B. And now... Uh, let's say shift volume again to bring down the volume a little bit. Wonderful. What else can we do to make this track a little bit more interesting? Why don't we use some plugins on the tracks? So let's go to track three, but this is the Fender Road sound without the arpeggiator. But maybe we also want to, uh, want to make the track active, right? You can do this here. Now that the first track is active, that's, you see it because it's a lighter gray. Let's go to track three. And now we want to control the devices. So let's say shift first button here to control the devices. And immediately I can control on the first plugins the most important eight knobs. So let's give some resonance with the second button. If you want to control another plugin, you can hold down the device select 
and change this here with this arrows up and down. But we stay now on the filter. If you like the sounds of this tutorial, you can download the plugin Mutant Player. If you like the sounds I'm using in this tutorial, you can download the Mutant Player for free and use exactly the sounds I was using. Um, here's a short video about the Mutant Player. We at Mutant have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugen Player. Each instrument in the Mugen Player comes with a composition. MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session, so you can be inspired not only by a sound, but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. This means that every time you open the plugin, there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double click to load it into your plugin. In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches, and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new. But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugen Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugen Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments, MIDI files, and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions. Mugen, to make music.